Here we have a different male model, and here we have the penis, and the penis ends in the glands. Now, if we remove these, we have a better view of the structures that we are looking at the other model. These are the scrotum, and we can see here within the scrotum, we find the testes, and this is the epididymis. These are the blood vessels of the male reproductive system. These are the gonadal arteries in red and the gonadal vein in blue. Specifically, this are the testicular arteries and the testicular veins because this is the male reproductive system. Now, if we look on this side, we can see the cremaster muscle, which is the muscle that when it contracts, it can bring the scrotum closer to the pelvic cavity of the male. If we put the cremaster muscle and the gonadal arteries and veins, plus the ductus deferens that is taking the sperm from the testes all the way up behind the urinary bladder. That is what we call spermatic cord. So the spermatic cord in reality is composed of the arteries and veins that we see here, the testicular artery, testicular veins, it's composed of the cremaster muscle, also the ductus deferens and the nerves that we have here. Together, they form the spermatic cord. But for our purpose, we are using a tag at this part as a reference to name spermatic cord. But don't forget, the spermatic cord also includes the cremaster muscle that you're seeing on this side. Now, if you look at this section of the male penis, we see here the two corpus cavernosum, that I told you there is one on the right side and one on the left side. And in the bottom here, we have the corpus spongiosum, which is the male erectile tissue that will support, stabilize the sponge urethra, which is going through it. So if this is the corpus spongiosum and you would have a little dot right here in the middle, that would be making a reference to the sponge urethra that goes through the male penis. And here in this section of the male penis, you can literally see the sponge urethra right here. But these two dots in the corpus cavernosum is just for the model to connect. So remember, you have two corpus cavernosum, and these are the ones that get filled up with blood and gives a male an erection. And the corpus spongiosum is there to stabilize the sponge urethra. If we go posteriorly, we can see here also the prosthetic gland. We see the seminal gland, and we see here the ductus deferens that brings the sperm all the way to behind the male urinary bladder. And then here we have again the ejaculatory duct that brings the sperm and the semen secretions towards the prosthetic urethra, the portion of the urethra that goes through the prostate, and then the membranous urethra, and finally the sponge urethra. The way I tell students to remember the order of the male urethra is to remember that males have PMS, the P for prosthetic, M for membranous, and S for sponge urethra. So males have P, M, S. That's the order of the male urethra.